So let me read this quote to you uh, okay. from Elder Yustin Parlevu. He says, the greatest sin today is carelessness. We pray carelessly. We repent carelessly, even if we do it. Times will come when only the ones that have the spirit of God will be able to know good from evil. Human mind itself on its own will, on its own, will not be able to tell the difference. There will be great deceptions and only the Holy Spirit will give us the discernment we need so we can save ourselves. Pray that you will not be deceived. Only through prayer, we can receive the Holy Spirit. If we don't pray and just persevere in our laziness and unrepentful ways, we will completely lose the Holy Spirit and his guidance. Okay, welcome to the Royal Path. My first time of saying that. I guess I'm taking the, <laughs> the hosting duties. While uh, we have we have Esther down uh, with a little bit of an illness, we have Andrew out with his family leave for the new baby Matrona, and so it'll be it'll be father and I. So we'll see how this one goes. Uh, and I have a question. I have a question this time. I used cool. I used to always ask people, and I found it very interesting. I would always ask people. Would you rather be would you rather be rich but nobody knew who you were or famous but completely broke? But I'm oh. going to but I'm going to but I'm going to reframe it cuz I want to put some more guardrails on it. Right? Okay. Cuz I think we're too I I think asking you that I, I don't think that's that's strong enough. I, so this is this is what I want to ask. I want to ask would you rather have virtually limitless financial means but in spending you could never be able to spend those means to acquire any sort of a platform right so you could never spend them for like to in the pursuit of some ideological thing and no one would ever know that it was you who spent them or would you rather be these are all hypothetical of course someone who had an incredibly large platform but part of the requisite of you having that platform is that you could not ever own anything mm, yeah uh they're both really tempting the the former has been kind of like you know uh, a secret dream of mine actually mm -hmm. um because the thought of being able to i i'm I don't know. Some people might be shocked. I'm really into philanthropy. Mm -hmm. Like I, so the so the idea of being able to to have the ability to just get into the this really uh, qualitative and quantitative, I guess, because there's a there's you know there's kind of like you need both on that level. As level of philanthropy is just that that would be so wonderful and honestly ideal to not to be to do it completely anonymous like if if if, <laughs> if i was in a place of like having an opportunity to, to to get into philanthropic work but my name needed to be attached to it that would make me actually be a little hesitant you know what i mean mm -hmm. But the idea of being able to be completely, oh my gosh, that's just like a, that's just like a dream. That's something I could just dream about all day long. If I had that opportunity, oh man, it'd be wonderful. Um, but you would give up, but, but then you wouldn't be able to have a platform. And I think most people know most, you've made so much change with the platform that you have had. So it seems like that, and that's why I ask. And that's why I think it would be, be interesting. Separate? But see, it can be separate. No, 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 no. That's the, this, this is the rule. So you can I have, have you can't have any you will have no, no platform, platform in the world in the world ever yes no oh. or or you can have a virtually unlimited platform 
but you can never own anything. Okay. Well, besides the fact that that sounds like something Klaus Schwab wants me to, to get into, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go with the latter then. Okay. And and, and I guess it just shows how how much of a vain person I, I am. But um, you know, as I'm all about philanthropy, like I said, I, I love it, whatever. But man doesn't live off of bread alone. And the fact of the matter is we're talking in large part with the former uh, with a significant degree of materiality, <clears throat> which I don't, I don't have a disdain for. You know what I mean? It's like, how am I going to talk to people about, you know, sacramental life and, you know, the Trinity and like whatever, noetic understanding, and they're hungry. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, mm -hmm. those, the, that doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. But if you're, if I'm, you know, <laughs> those parameters, I would have to take the former, I mean, the latter, I think, because, um, well, I don't know. It's hard, man. It's a hard one. It is hard, because I don't, it's not like I, stay, I don't know, I don't really think, well, it's hard, because it, it's, I don't really see, it's not about me having a platform, but it's just, man, sharing orthodoxy and the gospel, the lived experience of the gospel, to me, that's life. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. to, I mean, there's, that's life, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I know, I know it's vain. I know it's foolish, whatever, but I'll, I'll take, I'll take the latter actually, since you put it that way, you know? Um, I think, I, you know, for me, I, you know, if I'm really honest with myself, I take the former. Hold I know on, I, sh I know on, I shouldn't. I know on. I shouldn't. Hold on. I know it's I just, shouldn't. It's, it's just the two of us, so I can say this. <laughs> Let me just <clears throat> excuse me, because it just dawned on me. I'm, I'm getting to the whole genie realm. You know the genie. Yes, that you yes got the genie with the wishes. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I, I, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll real hard with the ladder. Actually. Okay. Go ahead. Because. In my mind, I'm like, I'm thinking about my circumstances, right? Eight kids, mm -hmm. wife, blah, 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 you know? But at the same time, if I have this kind of like platform, because see, for me, it's one of those things like, uh, like if I could, if I could kind of like package what mm -hmm. I think my message is, like if everybody has, if you almost think of each person like a stained glass window, in Christ, mm -hmm. everyone has their own kind of little aspect of the mosaic that they're bringing. Mm -hmm. right? Everyone's bringing it, okay? So I think I got a couple pieces of glass. Mm -hmm. And one of them I would kind of package my life and what I have to say to the world is like, seek wisdom, find Christ. Mm -hmm. If you seek wisdom, you'll find Christ. Like um, this idea of being able to really help people um, move out of these these traps that they're in you know I, I just think about like the neighborhood we're in here and just how man I just every day just I just thought about it today just driving down Prospect which is the main drag which you're off of and it's just you know it's like oh man it's like I see the people on Prospect and I just I wish I could just like I'll just make a little confession I don't know what's happening tonight I feel like <laughs> I feel like I had a little bit of Rocky or something like that it's good but like <laughs> I just, sometimes I have this, this like fantasy. It's a little daydream of like, cause there's like this corner um, gas station mm. where just people will hang out like they're on the block, whatever. And then like we have prostitution and stuff like down, like on that drag and everything, a lot of prostitution, you know? So like any time of the day, it's like, especially the, the days that I'm either coming in like for, for matins, for morning prayer or like leaving late at night, whatever. It's like, it, it's just there. I just like, I want to just whip my car in there and just get out, you know, Cassock and everything and just being like, people, listen to me, you know what I mean? And just tell them about the love of God and just tell them about like, you have no idea who you are, you know what I'm saying? But even, even this idea of being able to just have simple conversations with people and then talking to them about how to live their life in pursuit of wisdom. It's like, I don't even need to say the name of Christ. If I can just get people to start 
pursuing wisdom in their life and just see that it's a better way to live, they're going to, Christ is going to be unfolded to them. So that being said, having a platform to really just, man, like if I could have a radio station, man, if I could have a radio station, if, if I could, man, if you, if, if I could radio station like six months and just take away all the bad, just, oh man, music is so terrible. You know what I mean? Like I could, I could change the hood in like six months. If you could just get, well, people don't listen to radio anymore. You know what I'm saying? But like, all well, the, the analog, the equivalent of something like that. The equivalent of it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because it's, if you could have control over Netflix and oh, people would be man. watching it the same number of hours that they are now. Oh, man. Listen, but you could put whatever you wanted on there. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you a story. The wife and I, uh, we, were, we went out to dinner. I can't remember. I think it was like Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. It was both our birthdays. So we went out to dinner, went to this Brazilian. Um, Wait, your birthday was on Monday? uh it was on it was uh no it was on sunday oh happy birthday well, thanks um <laughs> and papadia's was the uh was on the 26th so a lot, of birthdays. Tuesday before. a lot of birthdays so like monday we just did a joint thing we went out to eat whatever and so um anyway so we're in this like brazilian steak joint whatever and you know a group of dudes come in you know five six dudes from the neighborhood you know what i mean and like just real talk. It's like, I'm sure people are like, they're kind of out of place here. You know what I mean? You, you get what I'm saying. But this one cat, man, he was wearing a Metallica shirt. <laughs> and he stood out. It was like, it was, it was so wild. And I, it was just a split second thought, but I was like, man, if I could get three hours with that guy, I can infect that whole group. You know what I mean? And just, and just get them to start like looking at life. I don't even like Metallica. You know what I mean? I don't even like Metallica, but it's the fact that he was wearing that shirt. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, yep. you. Open-minded. Me... He's an open-minded. Open -minded. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's the type of thing. And, and so for me, like, that's the thing about a platform is like, anyways, doing something like that, it's like, if I could get people to start looking at wisdom in various ways, it's like, man, people will start learning how to, you know, they'll, they'll catch on to be an entrepreneur or whatever. And then it's like, forget the philanthropy on that end. It's like, people will start, uh, that would be kind of like teaching them how to fish versus, versus giving them a fish. So in a typical Father Turbo way, I went really long way around that. <laughs> the point being is, yeah, I'm going to double down on the platform because I think it would be just one of the great ways to use that platform was to would be able to teach people how to fish versus giving them a fish. Does that make sense? It does. I want to, I want to dig in. We said that we would just do, we, we would just go anywhere, but I think yeah. that like, this is, I think this is perfect because this one, this, when you said seek wisdom, find Christ, that really resonated with me, but it's also, there's, um, you did a, an interview with Buck Johnson on Counterflow not too long ago that was great. He just had an interview with an author. I, I should have remembered his name, but I didn't think I was going to bring him up, who wrote a book that's, that uh, has recently been published by Uncut Mountain Press, which is Father Peter Hears. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called The Antichrist, The Antichrist yeah, Globalism, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, something about this. And, and, Buck Johnson had him on, I think, yesterday. It's a great interview. Uh, I was watch it's it. funny. Yeah, I was listening to it or watching it or listening to it in the car as the thing where I, I ran across the, you know, fellow brother in Christ who was here, you know, pulled over on the side of the road and I stopped. And all I was thinking was, oh, I got to send this to Father Turbo because he would love this. He would love this. But the interesting thing, and it's, it's so why it resonated with me. And this is, and, and I want you to talk a little bit about this because I, I'm sure that like, this is just a repeating pattern is, cause it was certainly a pattern with me. He was a, I guess he was raised Lutheran. This particular author was raised Lutheran, then became an atheist, found evangelicalism, then kind of fell off from that, was a PhD at Stanford in political science, wrote this dissertation that later became the book. But he said that his dissertation what he was looking for is why did it's almost like Jordan Peterson and the maps of meaning 
right? He's like, why did totalitarianism rise in the West? In, like, why did we see that? Why do we keep seeing this pattern of totalitarianism rise? Where does it stem from? What happens? And he goes on this historical sort of journey through it. And he basically, for lack of a better term, he says, it's because it fills a giant God-sized hole mm. that was left wow. in the West from the, the loss of traditional Christianity. Now, what's interesting was he was not Orthodox, and he admits that even when he was writing that and all of that, he had no understanding what traditional Christianity was, mm -hmm. but he came to the conclusion that clearly this is all related to the move away from traditional Christianity. Mm -hmm. So he comes wow. to that conclusion as a materialist looking at right. history, basically. Right. And then, like, soon after that, of course, he finds orthodoxy. He's been orthodox since 2003. So basically, the same year that he puts this out, he... he for, so for me, what resonated was I was like, oh, that's my story. And mm -hmm. I think that, like, this is so many people's story that it's like, I'm looking for the thing, the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it almost doesn't matter what road you go down. If you are genuinely pursuing the truth, you will end in orthodoxy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm going to say something which may surprise people or may not, but um, Christ is real. He's God. And the Orthodox Church is the manifestation and the, and the, the church that he founded. I'm saying that in an absolute sense. And I say that because, again, we've talked about this before, like the, the tension, it, the, the strength, is, this is a real path moment. We have to wield that absolute statement with, with the right balance. Because I, when I say that, we have to like throw off all of the tendencies to see that as an ideological statement, which I think a lot of people make it as that. And when that happens, then it, 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 it throws off the breadcrumbs for other people. It messes the tracks for the people so they can't follow. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And so people don't yeah. realize that they're actually really doing people in the church a disservice when they don't really filter out that ideological kind of like temptation in, in that absolute statement. Are you following me at all? It's, it's almost like there's either a, it's almost like a lack, it's almost lazy. Is it laziness or it like a laziness. lack of patience or something? It is, it is laziness. That's why I brought the whole balance thing, right? And we talked about the gymnast having the best body, right? We talked about it before, like, because the balance is, that statement is absolutely true. But it, it's absolutely true for the right reasons. And, and what I'm trying to get at is the ideological kind of like slant to it. That's what throws people off and it makes people feel like, ooh, that's boo-boo. Like that isn't, because, because it, what it does is it, 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 it almost, this is kind of weird. I may walk this back a little bit, but it almost, if you understand what I'm saying, it almost begins to, um, it almost begins to give like a weird kind of antichrist feel to it because People, when you if, if you say that in the wrong sense, it 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 obfuscates Christ for people, and and I know someone's gonna say, well, that's because people are like running from the light and all that stuff, and I get that, but I don't mean it in this sense because you know I just had a conversation with someone today, and I saw it in him. So this is very interesting. We're talking about I saw it in him where it's like his heart his heart is really searching like i'm fam like i'm familiar with his ministry i'm familiar with him as a person and he's really searching so much so where he was like look i went back and i asked people i said listen what i did here what we did here was this all just craziness was this all just me being just like making stuff up like people don't do that you know what I mean? I've known too many. I've I've known too many pastors and, and and truth seekers who were like, when I've when I've put this in front of them, I'm like, okay. If this was true, would you give up 
all of this for that. And I've had, I've, I straight up had people tell me I can't do that. Right. With tears, with tears in their eyes. Right. I, I've, I've had people do that. So what, so when this, when this gentleman says to me, like, yeah, I went back and I told people like, Hey, tell me the truth. Was I just, was I, was I crazy here? Was I making this stuff up? So I'm saying this is like, his heart's true. And so when I started edging him in this understanding of the absolute nature of the, like the absolute, the fact that this, the church is the true church in that absolute sense. Like I, I had to really, and I didn't even mean in the ideological sense, but I had to like really kind of like unpack that for him. And he was able to kind of breathe a little bit, right? So what am I talking about here? This, this is what I mean. When you begin to look at the fact that everything that's happened, all the political movements, the economic movements, all these things, like you can't make sense of them. That's why the conspiracy, quote unquote, conspiracy theory thing is so interesting because it is a smokescreen in the other way too. Because people know something's wrong, but the thing is people, they get lost in understanding something's wrong, but they never really can get to like, well, what's underneath all of it? Are you following what I'm saying? And I, I am, know, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I know for some people, they, they just, they can't accept it. They go like, that's too simple, but I'm telling you, we, we like, we know this. But right? is, is that, Father, because, forgive me, is that because they're coming from a, because uh, it's funny because I've, I've, have been pondering this and I ran into it again today. Is that because they're coming from a materialist mindset of trying to like the mechanistic universe and they're like looking for the, the they're looking to describe all the cogs and they can't, it's like, they can't do it. And so then they're yeah. like, ah, let me, let me invent the cogs. And there's your conspiracy theory. For sure. Right. But you know, I, you know what I another think another part of it is though, too, is they want to find out what's going on. They they have the materialist lens and all that, but there's still that part of them in regards of like the morality where they're just like, it can't be Christ, and it can't it can't be Christ because I still want to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I still want to do all these other things, right? Oh, that one, yeah. Because because here's the thing, like yeah, you know I got I I got another person in my in my mind to a lot of people listening. They'll know they'll figure out what I'm talking about. Like, you know, he, our community, you know, has a lot of love for him, this, this, and that. And we get down and, and we talk about all the stuff, but he just can't get there. He's, he's, he's such a materialist, but on top of that, you know, it's just, he has the, he has the, 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 uh, he has that scarecrow, that straw man. He has that straw man that he's fighting against in regards of Christianity, quote unquote, Christ. You know what I'm saying? It's because he wants to do what he wants to do. And I'm not, I'm not going to psychoanalyze the guy and talk about, you know, issues with his mom, making him go to church and blah, blah, blah. But you get what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And that gets in the way for a lot of people. But interestingly enough, what I was saying about the ideological component of that statement, it applies to them too. Like when, when we talk about like, the singularity of the truth of who Christ is and that the Orthodox church is that manifestation of his body in the world. And you have to present it in such a way. And I don't mean present it like dress it up, but I mean, you have to really know what you're offering to someone. You have to like the, the reality of Christ and the totality of who he is and what his mission is which is to undo the works of the devil, to bring man to salvation. Once you have that clear, like clear that clear in sight, then all of these other streams come in, they start making sense because it's like, well, yeah, all of these movements, whether they're through corporations, whether they're through whatever it is, it's like, it's all the enemy. It's all, it's all the principalities, right? And it's like, if you can't, it, It's almost like, um, you remember in, forgive me, this, I don't even know if this is going to make sense. People are going to like be crazy on this episode. You remember The Village? The movie, The Village? Yeah. The uh, M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that movie. A lot of people don't like that movie. I like. I that love movie. The Village. My wife yeah, and I, I oh great. man, my wife and I, we love The Village. It's yeah. great, it's great. Um, 
but it's like you remember how it's like a spoiler alert you know the 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 beast costume you know mm-hmm. what i mean yep for a lot of people it, it's a weird analogy but i'm just like a lot of people they're looking at the they're looking at this costume you mm-hmm. know what i mean and they're seeing like oh this is terrible whatever you know and and they're just what they don't understand is that um it's a costume right and and they're 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 stuck in the costume but it's the problem is what is what's animating the costume you know what i'm saying like you're saying like the corporations or whoever the globalists or whatever is the costume yeah. that's the right? costume but what they're not seeing is what's animating the costume what's animating the costume this is and powers and principalities we're talking about and so and so the reason why i'm using the village as an example is because it was in effect that costume which kept everyone at bay in effect mm, but mm. the reality is it wasn't the costume right it was it was the machinations and the plans of, of the people obviously right and mm. my analogy breaks down a little bit because it's like they had good intentions you know what i'm saying but the point i'm trying to get at is well did did they though father right they believed themselves to have they believed good intentions themselves. they believed themselves right but isn't that but isn't that true of someone who's in service to the enemy like or, don't mo- wouldn't most people in service i mean i mean i when i was in service to the enemy i definitely told myself well, did i really believe it i don't know but i definitely told myself i t- tried to get myself to believe that i had good intentions yeah yeah and i mean honestly you know it's kind of part of the reason why i <laughs> why i was kind of hesitating a little bit because i could totally see myself in in the founders of the village you know what I mean? Like I have sympathy for them. And that's why I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like they had good intentions, but did they? Well, yeah, I mean, because I could see myself in that. You know what I mean? But the point being is is it's very easy to just assume it's the thing. It's the it's the claws and the teeth and the whole thing, but that's not really your problem, right? That's not really a problem. And I guess if we're gonna if we're gonna do a deep dive analysis on the village, like the one thing I would say um is that what the families missed and this is like the this is like the really the core problem is that they were still trying to circumvent to a certain degree the freedom of their people if you understand what i'm saying it's like by controlling by trying to control their reality um for the sake of safety and all that to such a degree what what was the what was the cost of that because you could almost say this is part of the narrative that we were that we were fed is like this is being mm-hmm. done for your safety this is being well, it's done totalitarianism for though isn't it i mean it wasn't is. that a totalitarian society really that they it had was. created it was you know it was and I, I think it's just important to really kind of recognize um the fact that like you know i in, in the spirit of andrew like I, I try to be careful not to see myself as like a Captain America mm-hmm. in the sense of like, yeah, you know, I could be very easily tempted like anyone else could, I guess, kind of like Red Skull type of like mm-hmm. situation too, because this idea of just like, I'm always on the side of, you know, freedom and all that. It's like, that's something I have to work at. Mm-hmm. I'm just full, you know, like full transparency here. It's like, I think anyone who's, ever ever if you've had anyone you you, you're you've been responsible for Mm -hmm. right um it's one of the reasons why i bow my knee to god right Mm -hmm. because i'm responsible for a lot of people like Mm -hmm. on a real level you know what i mean and it's a real struggle and i I have to consciously fight to be like i want to fix this situation but i can't i have to let it play out Mm -hmm. i want you know what i mean because there's times where i'm like I want to insert myself and it's not always altruistic sometimes it's because um you know i've had a rough day myself and i just want to just right. kind of like not deal with the thing it, it it happens with kids it happens all across the board sure. but i'm i'm just you know whatever it's i'm being exposed tonight but like i am consciously always trying to like work at that that's my that's my balancing act hmm. to be like no i like I hate watching people I love hurt, but a lot of times I have to let them hurt because I see God's hand. I'm like, this is God. I can't, if I get in the way, I'm getting in the way because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to see them hurting. 
You know what I mean? In but a I way, have- in a way, the um, you know, if it's done in the wrong way, that sort of like just the statement of like, you know, where you say like, if you've fallen off the royal path to saying like, nope, Christ is the answer, one true church, this is it, that's it. Mm-hmm. When somebody, when you're encountering somebody who is really seeking, who is seeking wisdom and who therefore, if they continue to seek wisdom, will find Christ mm-hmm. and that you could be participating in that, it's almost like you have inserted yourself to fix the thing. Like, look, man, I just don't want, I don't want you to have to make X, Y, Z mistake. Mm-hmm. But I know for myself, my faith is bolstered by the fact that I have made mistakes and I, I know so much of what not to do mm-hmm. that I can truly say, no, 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 Christ is absolutely the answer. I've gone down so many roads, right? right that where I'm like, no, absolutely. And, and I wonder for me and, and my personality, no, I don't even need to wonder because I found Christ because of that. Right. right. Like, because of, the, I, I, it wouldn't have had but something presented orthodox way. to me eight, eight years ago. It wouldn't have done it. But see, what Nothing. you're talking about is what, the way that you're approaching, when you're describing it, that's the proper way. That's, that's, that's the way to, 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 that's one of the ways to balance, to stay on the path. Um, because the other way that, that I'm talking about in regards to the fight against is this kind of like, it's the Vader. You know what I mean? Vader's like, look, man. I've seen too much and I'm just like, I'm bringing order. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm bringing, I do. I'm bringing order. I do. And, and it's real tempting because it's like, there's times when I'm having conversations with like the guy I was just mentioning earlier, you know, like I want to, well, number one, I know if I say to him, Hey, so-and-so look, man, it's just, it's Christ. And boom, 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 boom. Like I could do that maybe. And I could do it maybe in a way that might be kind of cheeky enough or like clever enough where he won't just be like, you know, I don't even want to talk to you again, mm-hmm. but it, it would circumvent all the things that are necessary, primarily like him coming to that discovery and that him coming to that discovery. Um, Cause it's a weird balance, right? There, how will people know unless, unless someone is sent to them? That's what Paul says, right? But at the same time, you can't fall into coercion and you can, you have to be careful to not in your own strength of will. Right. Cause, cause, of, cause of our shared background, we both are probably very sensitive to like watching the will come out on uh, like in, in proper sense. Like I don't want my will to come out and just like do strength of will preach Christ in that sense, because the real deal, especially now, especially now, mm-hmm. is that people come into, forgive me for, for using the term, because I know it's going to make people puke, whatever, but like a real kind of relationship through submission. Because mm-hmm. like a willingness, like that's what I mean, mm-hmm. like a, a willingness where it's like, I, I wrestled, I've done this, I've done that. Okay, God, you, you've got me. You know what I mean? Like you've got me. That type of that type of awareness is so powerful because it carries people. You know, like uh, for me, it's been the biggest advantage of having this kind of Damascus Road like experience because it doesn't matter like what kind of what kind of priests I've had to deal with. What it does none of it matters. You know what I'm saying? Because I've just it. I've had this north star to guide me this this giving of myself right but for a lot of people they can get moved by the strength of personality the strength of a strong argument and what i'm getting at just to make it more clear is like uh you know the lord the master he gave the parable and he talked about um the seed and there's some seed that that goes into the ground but it's shallow right and you know, it sprouts, but then the sun comes down and it withers away because it doesn't take root. These are the people I'm talking about. And that happens more than people might realize. And especially in this day and age of like, you know, um, I, I'm all, we're obviously all about it because we have the platform, that's why we're using it. But like, it's very easy now for people to just get into the loop and get all the good arguments, right? And be like, I'm all about this, but like, their root isn't really going deep. You understand what I'm saying? 
Well, yeah, I do. It's so I it's so prevalent. And I, I do recall, uh, you know, probably about this time last year, you know, people commenting, hearing about my conversion and baptism, and they were like, oh, I'll give it six months. This is just yeah. the zeal. This is just the zeal of a convert. And, you know, the thing is of a new convert. And the thing is, I was like, you know, I get you on that. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not I'm not going to slight you for that because you don't know my spiritual background right Mm -hmm. so you don't understand the story and that this is part of a continuum and finding something that i have been working hard at for decades right so it's not just like i ran into like you say some charismatic preacher somewhere and and took me to their whatever parish congregation whatever who love bombed me and i was like oh i'm a christian now you know what i mean right but i definitely understand where where that's perhaps the majority of people who are like, I'm a Christian now at some right. point in their life. Right. right. And six months later, it's like back to the old thing that they're doing. Right. Because from, I mean, I don't know, kind of getting back to why, again, why we, why we started the project is like those people and I, I'm, I'm not taking it away. I want to run with it. That's great. You know what I mean? But those people, I'm just telling you, like, and you know, this, those people, they're the ones who are going to populate, you know, Peterson's army. If, if, if they don't move past that. And so that's what I'm saying about like, really being careful that the truth that like, I believe, like, I don't believe, I know that Christ is God. And I know that the Orthodox church is his true church. And, and like, history is a nice thing, all that stuff, but it's like, it's not even because of the history, right? It's, it's, it's the totality of the package, right? Like, that has to like be the the drill that gets you down into where the water is you're, you're, so that you can get real good root right but if it's if it's just thrown out as an elevator pitch then i then i fear that for a lot of people it just sets them up because here's the thing the times we're living in are so nutty that people are like yeah that sounds great of course i, I get that that makes sense which is good right which is good but if it just stops there that's that's the problem that that I think we're dealing with, and we we keep coming back to it. But I think in this case, it's it's important because when you circle back around and you start looking at the fact that you know this um, this kind of growing the growing sentiment, like where it isn't just the kind of you know um, in the, the um, independent thinkers now. It isn't just like the independent thinkers and like the low hanging fruit of like subculture and libertarianism and like all that. It's like the average Joe is starting to kind of like uh, get sick of things. You know what I'm saying? You see that happening, then it's like, oh man, um, are people really coming in and, and, and becoming aware of Christ or are they, or are they just, because it, it, it is a singular thing and it makes so much sense, but are people just wanting something that makes sense versus truth, right? Because the truth that we're talking about, the Christ that we're, the true Christ, what they don't realize is you come in, great. You found a safe conservative spot, great. You found a place that makes all of the, the points on the map line up, great. But it's going to hurt, <laughs> right? And, and and when, and when you stick in there, when you hang in there, what's going to happen is you're going to be exposed to that heat, to that light of Christ, and it's going to sting. And that's where people may not bounce. They may not leave. They may just like distort and start to change things. And that's where some people rightly are concerned about an influx of converts coming in from, you know, far right um, far right leaning kind of perspectives because it, it's it's much easier to allow that error on the right to kind of foment and foster than it is the craziness on the left, right? The the I am seeing, yeah. There's there's something to this idea, and it also it concerns me because. I mean, I know that like for some individuals that 
you know, my conversion has been a point of entry for them. And it's something that you even talked to me about, I think from maybe even the first time we had a conversation uh, on this topic where you said, look, you know, you, you reach enough people that, you know, you are going to be an entry point for some people, you mm -hmm. know, in this, and I've taken that to heart and I see, you know, I've, I've made a point of trying and even, you know, <laughs> even as of very recently, uh, you know, and, and sort of what I'm harping on is I am seeing, and I'm glad you made the distinction between it. And maybe it's something that we need to keep making the distinction of, like, I am seeing a lot of people using the Orthodox church to justify quote unquote political uh, conservative political views right mm -hmm. so these views of the right to where they're like well i'm an orthodox christian so of course i have to have these views whatever and then but then they want to have this political action mm -hmm. which to me i'm like i do understand that there is certainly a tradition of i mean there's orthodox empires there's all of these things like there does need to be governance there does need to be these sorts of things like and orthodox people are going to need to govern themselves govern themselves but to be like okay i'm going to use orthodoxy or my orthodoxy as a sort of a um i don't know i don't know what you a qualification mm -hmm. right like a qualification for polit to to acquire political power in whatever vein i mean from dog catcher to you know senator whatever it is mm -hmm. um and it seems like a it's, it seems like, and, and I don't know, and so this is why like, I'm sort of looking for your opinion on this, but it's, it seems like if you are still pursuing, probably, I don't know, I have a sense of, and maybe this is just my temperament, I have a sense of humility about the idea that like, how could I even hope to represent Christ in the political arena, mm -hmm. right? Like, how could I even do that right? Like, what a it's why you almost need a hereditary monarchy where you could train somebody up to be an right. Orthodox leader for their entire life. Right. Um, how could I just be like, Oh yeah, I'm a convert. Okay. Now I need political power because I've got all the answers now. Right. Right. And like this, this is really tough because we, in our context, like being stateside and, and being Westerners, it's like, um, you know, I mean, right? We're not a we're not a democracy. We're a republic, right? We know all that stuff, but it's like the reality of the illusion <laughs> of of the ability to um, affect change and in the way that people think that they can. That's something you're dealing with too. Why, let me drill that down a little bit. Um, I think there's so many people who are in a in a, in a type of like political prelist, political delusion. They think that what they're doing, man, this is gonna be rough for some people, I'm sorry. I don't know, this is like a black pill episode, I guess, but like there's people who really think that what they're doing matters. And it, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna tell you it doesn't. Like there's- Politically there's, you mean, right? Politically, freaking yeah. frick, politically. It, it, it doesn't, you know, like I, I'm all for local politics. I get that and, and, that's the place where like i think that you you can make some changes you can affect some good but i think even in those areas where you can affect some change like on a real super super local level i think sometimes people are, are even too like bought into the idea that like what they think is possible is is, is still too diluted you, you understand what i'm saying because i do Ultimately, at the core of so much of this, our people are, are still, even with the best intentions, they're still in trying to get out from under, you know, the, it's this weird thing that Westerners and Americans have of like, you know, I determine my own reality. You understand what I'm saying? Map is destiny, however you want, like I am, I control my own life, like, you know, freedom, like I, like, just give me a gun, do whatever, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be free. It's like that that's not reality. And what Americans have to some degree is sure greater a greater sense of liberty, right? Than 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 the rest of history. But it's the the kind of like cowboy sense of it that most of us have 
and I and I, I'm talking across the board, man. I, I mean, the the guy with the "Don't Tread on Me" flag and the AR-15, all the way down to the cat in the hood who just thinks like he could talk and act any any way he wants. Like to me, they're on the same spectrum. There's this weird. Uh, it, it, it's it's a very American thing to think that. Right. And and I and that's the kind of like um, it's a it's a weird kind of mass delusion that I think a lot of us suffer from as Americans. You know, does this make sense what I'm saying? Because it it does that people are like there is a delusion that you can some your personal preferences, you can somehow participate in the political process and your personal preferences are going to be expressed. That they're going to be expressed and that and even, and even I mean who's not to say that you know well you have this you have this perspective because it's it's the easiest one that that kind of fits where you it's it's obviously your confirmation bias to some degree you know what I'm saying or your your opinions being formed by this larger party right because even even the dude okay the dude in the hood versus the guy with the don't tread on me sticker the dude in the hood his disaffectedness and his like it doesn't matter because I'm black, blah, blah, blah. Even that is something that's been sold to you. Do, do, you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? It's, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a popular view. It's that's, a, a, that's an easy view to hold. It's an easy view to hold and it's across the board. And, it, and it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's extremes on both ends that don't really lead you to the place where you can actually make real change. Let me try to make this a little bit more clear. Like what I'm trying to get at is um, you know, uh, Petrak Pavle, you know, St. Pavle, right, of Serbia. He, he had this great quote, I think we talked about it before, you know, he says, it's not up for you to choose your race, the, the generation you're born in, your class, all that. What's up to you is how, how are you going to live in those circumstances, you know? How are you finding Christ in those circumstances? Which gets us back full circle, because Christ is the only way out he's he a life in in a life in pursuit of him is the only way out right out of what out of what it is the only way out of the constructs confines and context by which every human being finds themselves in and the thought of I'm going to escape through nihilism or I'm going to escape through my self-determination, the AR-15. They are both delusion in thinking that you are going to create to whatever degree your reality, right? Because mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is, is that's not the case, right? That's not the case because if you don't tend to the thing, right? That's yours to tend to, right? you haven't in fact never really tasted true freedom, right? Like true freedom and, and true personhood is only found in Christ. See, that's another absolute statement that like, it, it, it's, I know it's wild for people to hear that, but Christ, the, the, the <laughs> part of what we get so mad with God about is the freedom he gives us, right? You pick a system, let's pick a religious system, right? This system like Islam, right? Here, here's your track, here's your lane. You just do this, okay, you're good. Hinduism, same thing. Here's your track, here's your lane. You just do this, whatever. Like we could just keep going on and on and on and on, right? And this is the straw man. People think that Christianity is the same thing. That's where, that's where, that's where they get it wrong. And that's where some of these people who come in who want to use orthodoxy as a platform for you know conservatism or nationalism this is where they get it wrong too because christ actually comes to you and says now you're free go you're free and that's where people lose their mind they don't know what to do with that freedom and that's where people then begin to you know i, I would just give you an example right just just so everyone knows i'm not completely off in la la land um uh the iron guard in Romania, right? Like you study the Iron Guard in Romania, it's like, man, there's some, like the, the roots of that movement and I'm, people are losing their minds, right? But like, if you study the roots of that movement, 
there were some profound nuggets there of spirituality and the way that, um, you know, the spirit of a people, you know, um, does have an effect. And, and there is something about, you know, re rejecting the, the hyper individualism and finding that like, yes, that's real. But very quickly, it morphed into this terrible, violent, fascist like thing with, with quote unquote orthodox trappings, right? That, that's what most people know about the Iron Guard is what it turned into and the terrible things that it did. But in the beginning, there was these really core things that were, that had value and they were Christ-centered, right? That's what happens to people if they don't keep that balance, right? Because that temptation to build a utopia, that temptation mm -hmm. to, to extract vengeance on our enemies, right? All of those things leave the path because Christ is like, you're free. Like, what are you doing? You know, you wanting to extract vengeance on your enemies, quote unquote, you're no longer free, right? You're a, you're a slave to your vengeance. You're a slave to your vengeance. You yeah. wanting safe utopia for your future yeah, yeah, generations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me the 14 words, right? Like, yep. like yep. you're a slave now to, you know, your genetics and like your, your security, your, your Kiliast. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. And, and, and here's the secret. Here, here's the secret. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. what? And then what? Well, this brings me, this brings me to, it's funny that we've come full circle now because before we were talking, I, I said, cause we had talked about, you know, that maybe the next thing that we'll do, which I think is a good idea is breaking down the beatitudes the same way that we kind of broke down the creed and do that when Andrew comes back. And I had said to you that when the, topic of the Beatitudes came up since we do Tipica here and I've been doing the Tipica, you know, for over a year now, since, mm -hmm. I mean, since uh, my baptism and, you know, there's a, a piece in Tipica where it's the Beatitudes and mixed in with that are some troparia that they vary um, every, every week. And it's usually like set up with, there's a, there's three sections. And the first section is, it's always calling to the story of the the good thief i guess they call him saint saint didymus or or yeah mm -hmm. pox or, or i think in russia they call him pox uh, um the, the the thief on the cross who says remember remember me all remember me in when, when thou comest in thy kingdom right and his relation adam was through the through the Adam was fell and through the and and then it goes into you know the saint that's commemorated and then the and then the Theotokos as the as the last piece. Yeah. But this is what I wanted to to talk with you about is about that that moment because so I guess this this thief Saint Saint Didymus I guess they call him. Um, no, it's not Didymus. It's what uh, is it? Uh, got a bunch of names depends yeah, on the, that's, the ethnicity that's thomas that's thomas um okay oh my gosh uh i thought i had it pulled up here he's on the, he's on our uh um let me oh. see it is uh dismas 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 sorry dismas. i should have known that yeah dismas dismas mm -hmm. so, so he's not officially canonized but is considered a saint right saint dismas mm -hmm. by most people yeah and he's the first person into paradise. Is that right? That's what the tradition uh, yeah. tells us. Yes. So, so I think that this is why it comes full circle is, you know, the juxtaposition of the two thieves and mm -hmm. this idea of the freedom in surrender. Mm -hmm. Right. That it's, and you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just right there. You know, it's like, they're both going to die. You know right. what I mean? They're both going to die. Right. And this and one says, screw you. Why don't you get down I right. in, in, in your king when you when thou comest in thy kingdom? And he's the first. It's like, yes, you surrendered. So. Into paradise, you go. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that in the juxtaposition, these two thieves, uh, I was just talking with the nuns about this uh, yesterday, actually. Uh this reality of we begin 
our experience of paradise or hell now. And not and I and not in like a poetic sense, but in a literal sense, right? Um because you have Saint uh Dismas and then uh the righteous Dismas, whatever, and then you have this this thief, uh the, the bad thief, whatever. Well, let's break this down because <clears throat> tradition holds that. Um, Dismas actually, do you know this about the flight to Egypt? Do you know this? Okay. So you know when um, the Lord and the, the Holy Family, whatever, goes into Egypt, right? Yes. <clears throat> excuse me. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. They're in Egypt, and at one point in time, they're about to get robbed, actually. Hmm. And um, these it's like three robbers or whatever they come in and uh they see the lord and our lady and dismas is like dismas basically sees the beauty of christ and recognizes him as like maybe not like god but like you know oh my gosh you know it says stop like we can't do anything to this child and his family right and so our lady basically blesses him and says, you know, like, you'll be remembered for this or whatever, right? Wow. Well, tradition holds that, that Dismas was in that band of robbers, right? And so wow. this recognition right. of the Christ was, was this is, this is this continuation. What I'm trying to get at is that that moment in which Dismas, as a thief, has that that clarity of of being a human, right? He has that break in this bestial cloud that he's under, and is like, no, we can't do this, right? He started his journey to paradise then. You see what I'm saying? He started his journey to paradise then, and then he gets to this point where he's with the master, and boom, he enters the gates. You see what I'm saying? And I feel comfortable saying that conversely or, or accordingly, excuse me, you know, the bad thief started his descent to hell long before then too, right? And this is, this is really important because when we begin to realize that our lives here are for repentance, our, that's, that's the purpose of our life, which gets us back full circle to what we were talking about earlier. That's my big thing about, look, I can't speak for anyone outside the outside the walls. I can't. I'm just gonna say if you're inside the walls, stop fooling around. Don't don't try to bring in foreign things here. Don't do that. Get serious about repentance, about Christ, and about learning to love people because you're gonna die. And if you and if you die, quote unquote, within the walls of the church, but like there's no Christ in your heart, you're you're done you're you are done right and and th that's so important because you and i were just talking about the quiet before the storm right storm's coming i know everyone might be uncomfortable don't don't you know i hope i'm wrong that'd be great if in like you know six years we're sitting down yeah. and we're like hey remember father when you thought everything was gonna no. go crazy right no. that, let, let's no. hope that happens right let's not, i like, i mean father i don't even like Forgive me, but like it's it's just that's too absurd. Sure, but let's just you know okay, just for the just just for the sake of whatever, uh, let's just assume like okay. But I, I'm just saying that when things go sour, right, and like sour, um, this is what we need, right? This is what we need. Like, my concern is that my, my flock stay sheep and don't turn into wolves. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, because guess what? You turn into a wolf, man, you don't want to die as a wolf. Like, that, that's the thing that people need to understand. You don't want to die as a wolf, right? And so, and that's, that's a reality. That's a reality. Um, we were talking about um, like 
you know, whatever earlier this last year or something. I can remember like because one of the episodes we we're talking about, Andrew brought it up about, you know, the the war is hell on earth. <clears throat> literally <laughs> right it's manifest it's manifesting hell like boil that down to a personal level and and that's why i get it we live in a world where you got to pay taxes we live in a world where like you know i do my part like we have a school and you know i'll do my part to really continue to make sure that you know there's roadblocks against, you know, Moloch worshipers and all. I, I, I get that. Don't get me wrong, right? Because the principalities and the powers, they manifest this way. And so we have to deal with them this way too. I, I get that. But we have to keep the main thing, the main thing, right? Because our journey to paradise or hell starts now. And it's in those decisions that we make. And that's why the tradition is so exacting the way it is, right? Because if you don't, if you live your life in the pursuit of the passions, then guess what? When you pass, that's what you're left with. And that, and that goes across the board, right? That goes across the board. Um, when you look at the saints, how did the saints react and deal with the you know, let me take a step back. You know what I'm always like uh, impressed by? Hmm. I'm always impressed by the catacomb saints. I just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just, the mm -hmm. like, I, especially lately, you know, I've been really digging lately too is like, is the Romanians. And just like the, the saints of the prisons, great book. I just recommend everyone picking it up. Read some Father Roman Braga read some um you know uh elder justine uh Bargu. we were just you know we were just talking about him earlier um you know understanding that they maintained their humanity in the midst of the most demonic barbaric animalistic programs to like to take that from them that's what i'm talking about like but you don't you don't you don't you don't earn that muscle resistance like overnight. It's something that you gotta start, you gotta start your approach to paradise now, like St. Dismas, right? You gotta approach, because the thing about St. Dismas again, interestingly enough, like both St. Dismas obviously, I mean, they're both thieves. <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing, like they're both thieves. You know what I'm saying? And I think something people miss is like, um, don't get it twisted, you're, you're a thief. Like, that's the problem. That's one of the big problems with moralism. You th what, you think you're good because you go to church? Because you show up on Sunday? You're a thief, man. Well, this is what I found interesting about, about all of those Troparians is that, is that they're, you know, that the, that the choir is singing basically to say, I, I am the thief. I am the thief. I am the thief. Like, right. I'm asking you to remember me when you come in your kingdom. I am the thief. I am the thief. And it's just like whoa yeah, yeah. you know because it's interspersed with the beatitudes of christ's sake blessed are blessed are blessed are and it's almost like you would think oh that's me i'm that blessed one right i'm the one who's doing this just because i'm here in church right and then it's like i'm the thief mm -hmm. i'm the thief i'm the thief i'm just willing to surrender i'm not blessed i'm the thief mm -hmm. for me every sunday I've been brought to tears a couple of times in that section mm -hmm. because it's just something, there's a mystery happening there, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just really like, oh yeah, I'm not, yeah, blessed are they, but I'm not, I'm not him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the thief. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm a thief. You're a thief. I'm a thief. And, and I, I guess it's one of those things where I'm not going to feel too bad about the repetition because how many times do we say, Lord have mercy? Right. I mean, but but this is the thing, that repetition of, of understanding, like when you're hearing the homily, you know, on Sunday, wherever you're at, remember, like, don't point at someone else and think, oh, yeah, that's Jimmy. Yep. Father's talking about, you know, if I was talking about Luke, that's, you know, no, 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 no. That's you. It's you. 
like you're the one and i think we lose sight of that and and again i'm gonna connect it bring it back full circle that's one of the big dangers of not having your eye on your on your political influence either way left or right i don't care the like because very quickly if you're not watching that it can become easy politics becomes this this it's like intoxicating and then you don't realize you're slipping into you've lost that tension you know what i mean you you you've relaxed and it, because it's become so it's so much easier to just become an ideologue it just it happens it happens very fast i mean even at a local level the the most interesting thing just to just just as a sort of an anecdote of that and it's i, I think it's appropriate because it's a uh, an orthodox member of oh, is, he, is he orthodox oh he might actually be he might actually be jewish but he's Bel he's belarusian but he's part of the russian community in um in uh new hampshire and became friends obviously with my wife when we were there and whatnot and a big thing is um but i it's it's not i don't want to single him out because i saw this happen with every single person yeah. but like a big thing there with the free staters is like run for state rep right because they've got a bunch of these free stater libertarians or whatever and state state as state representatives in new hampshire and it was just very interesting that like i remember this one individual but again i'm not singling him out because i saw this so many times and I remember one of the first people that I met when we moved to New Hampshire, wonderful family, so helpful, you know, with my wife, you know, got us into Russian school with, uh, with my daughter and all of these sorts of things. And he, you know, he was running for state rep and he, he even like, was like, Hey, could you consult with me a little bit, you know, like about my message? This is what I'm trying to do. I know, you know, how to craft like branding type of stuff. And I worked with him a little bit and he ended up getting elected. Right. And so it was like, yo awesome great wonderful like cool great story like belarusian immigrant grew up in you know the soviet union and now he's like a you know state representative in new hampshire representing like free staters and everything okay wonderful what was so interesting was he got elected in you know november when we were there and then uh, the next time I saw him was at, right? So they had like, they, it was all in Russian and all the Russians were there and my daughter was in it and his son was in it and the whole thing, you know? And he, beforehand, he just stopped me and he was like, it was the most interesting thing that he said, yeah, you know, we just had our first like session, our first day. And um, he said, you know, now mind you, this was a guy who was like, when I first met him in New Hampshire, we hadn't even moved. I met him at like, pork fest which is the thing and this dude was walking with like a kalashnikov all the like all these guns he had like this all these knives and stuff he was one of the first people i ran into the first few minutes that i was there right and he's all about like freedom and against the government and like self-rule and all this and this and it was funny because he said he said to me and completely unironically right he was just like it was like the spe a spell had been cast over him and he was like you know we had our first session and it was like that door closed and I realized, you know, it's just me and these 200 other people and we have all the power in the state. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, dude, one session for yeah. you to be corrupted by power. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like he said that to me unironically, unironically. And it's just like, wow, that yep. it's so easy. It's so easy if your orientation is not perfect almost. That's it. And hold on. Perfect. Perfect. Again, um, I just, I may throw out a couple things, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna be really clear that we're talking about politics because <clears throat> uh, we need more people who are actually orthodox right not just nominally but actually orthodox who are doctors mechanics cooks technicians uh it guys you know what i mean we we need people like one of the like yeah we need priests but whatever but like what we really need is like we need people who like have the zeal for 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 the church and for christ that to seek a perfect life right a holy life to be in the world, 
right? Because and, and this is what I'm trying to get at is that's where you actually really do make change. Like the, the principalities game is a sucker's game. <laughs> that's what I mean, that's what I'm trying to really say. Like that's a sucker's game. And um, if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you, right? The Lord's temptations, right? Ishkushinya. Like that temptation of being brought to the high place and the, all the kingdoms of the world, right? And what does is, what is the, the evil one say? It's my, I have the power to give these to you. We all know the story, right? Christ didn't say, no, you don't fool. He didn't say like, no, 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 I'm, I'm the one. He didn't say oh, that. Oh, that's so important, Father, because yeah, the Lord did not say that. He didn't say that. But, pe that. but people are constantly like, well, it wasn't, it, it wasn't his to give. And it's like, it is very interesting that it's like, well, maybe it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like, understand what I'm saying. Right. That that's why I'm being really particular. So like, I don't want anyone clacking on the keyboard saying father, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, just understand what I'm saying. Like, if you want to run for local government, God bless you. Okay. But let's just be really honest about something. That's all I'm saying. Right. Like, let's just be really honest. Cause like that temptation, what you, what you, what you think that you're not going to bite the apple. Come on, man. You know, forgive the Joe Biden right there, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's a thing. And I just think when you understand that it is possible to have this, when we, when we say perfect, I don't mean, we don't mean perfect as in like morally perfect, sinless, like Christ is. We don't mean, we mean, I mean, perfect, like a well-trained gymnast can get a high score, right? Uh, um, a, sh a marksman can get a bullseye. That's not luck. When a marksman shoots a bullseye, now you put a gat in my hand and then I shoot a bullseye, that's luck. You know what I mean? But a marksman, if he gets a bullseye, that's not luck. Well, his orientation, his orientation is at the center of the target. The orientation of the gymnast is at the perfect 10. Their orientation is perfect. And what do we mean by orientation? It means their practice, their life, all of it, right? Their, their, their inner focus, all of those things are moving towards the accomplishment, the, the execution of that task, of that goal. That's what we mean, right? So listen, okay. You may think it's a waste of time, but I'm going to tell you something. The person who takes their spiritual life seriously, right? <laughs> and again, forgive me, I was just talking to the nuns about this, right? Uh, Mother Elizabeth actually said it. You know, people think that they're going to get to heaven by chance. It's like they think like, whoo, glad I made it, you know, like, like God spinning some roulette wheel and it's like tick, 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 tick. oh okay sorry Jimmy Jam you didn't make it oh okay Lois you're in like no no right if I'm a marksman right if, I, if I'm a marksman okay uh no 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 forget that forget that uh I'm a carpenter my daddy was a carpenter my granddaddy was a carpenter. You get what I'm saying? I'm a carpenter, okay? This is, this is part of the American delusion, by the way. And it's really this Western idea of, you know, the ancient philosophers understood that man was on a journey. The modern philosophers who have shaped society, right? They see man as an artist, creating himself as he wills. Are you following me, right? So everyone is under this delusion. Everyone thinks they're an artist, right? So anyways, you're not, by the way, sorry. So, like, my daddy's, I'm a carpenter because my daddy, my granddaddy's carpenter, right? So, uh, you know, we've been working on whatever, the, the town hall for three generations, right? Because people forget it took generations to build the cathedrals and all that. You following me? Whatever, right? So, it's like, it's my turn now, right? So, instead of me, paying attention, learning the tools, doing whatever. It's just like, yeah, that's fine, whatever. I watch dad, I go frolic with the milkmaid, I do whatever. 
Well, guess what? Dad's sick, right? He's like, okay, Johan, it's your turn. Like, we got this, you know, we got the north side of the wall that has to be, you know, the arches, the buttresses need to be done. And I don't deliver, right? And so, you know, at best, I'm not going to get paid or whatever. But at worst, you know, who knows what's going to happen to me? Okay, what am I talking about here? Uh, this is what's going to happen to people. Because instead of putting time in, like, you know what you're supposed to be doing. But instead, you're frolicking with the milkmaid or you're, you know, hanging out with, the, with you know, the, the, um, the bards or whatever you're doing. And it's like, yo, you need to be, at, you need to be about your craft because you're going to get called on. And when you get called on and you don't perform, I don't, who's, 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 where is the, the sorrow for you? You know what I'm saying? And, and I think that's what a lot of people need to really understand is that like, you know, you don't, you don't need to be in church 24 seven, right? But you need to have the church inside you 24 seven, if you see the distinction I'm making there, right? Like, and the thing is, is all these foreign things that come in, the distractions, and namely like this idea of like, you know, wanting your own utopia, the ideology, the politics, all that stuff. When you get off the royal path, it's really easy to think that you're doing something but you're not. And, and it's really, this is, this is, this is where the antichrist kind of starts to slip in on people because the moralism and the control and all this, that, I'm fighting for the right. It's the Vader. Everything we've talked about the last two hours, that's the real temptation. And the real perfection is keeping on that royal path. And like the royal path is Christ and, and really like keeping an eye for that. Right. Because this is, it's real practical actually. Because humility, um, all of all of the <laughs> the beatitudes basically keep you on that real path. Because if you're following the beatitudes, if you're following the beatitudes and that and that's your focus, you know it's gonna be funny. Hmm. The only people who are gonna end up politicians are people who God has called to to do that. Yeah, that the, uh, this is what I was kind of saying is that it's like it's got to be a it's got to be a calling, and you'll be like, oh, I don't wanna. Yeah. I don't want to yep. do that. Yep. And there's that a there's there's actually someone running, and it's interesting because you you see the difference. You know, I was in New Hampshire. I witnessed the politics, and like, there is actually someone running. He's running for New Hampshire Senate, and like, right when he announced, it's interesting because he actually called me. He's he. I mean, he's an old friend, Bruce Fenton. He's running for Senate in New Hampshire. He might actually win. Like, he's actually really like been popular but he called me and he was like hey i just wanted to call you because you know actually i've been watching your conversion and like your conversion actually really informed me in a lot of ways about what's going on but he said that basically it was just like a series of things happened and i don't want to you know we had a private conversation about the, the way that things happened but like it was definitely a situation where he was talking to me about like dude i'm just being called to do this like i don't want to do he's rich He's a he's multimillionaire. He's got a beautiful farm in New Hampshire with like all this acreage. I've been there several times. He's a wonderful guy, wonderful family, doesn't need to do anything, mm -hmm. you know? But he was like, I know I'm going to be beat up about that. I talked with him recently and he was like, dude, they've got, I, they've got files on me now. They're doing opposition research. He's like all these types of things. Like He's like, people are actually gunning for me already. Powerful, powerful people. And he's like, I, if do I if I don't keep reminding myself through prayer and all of this that this is that I'm doing this because I'm being called to do it like I don't want to do this yeah I don't want to do it that's exactly it that's exactly it and I I mean I'm glad you had that in your back pocket because that that's you know what you just laid out is shorthand what I'm trying to get at like that's the only way and that's what I mean by like I'm I know it sounds again totally almost maybe nihilistic but like i'm just it's it's a trap and and again like it is it is the reason why we started this project right and so yeah we talk about it a lot but that's the core thing is like we have like we have to keep that tension and and 
the balance is like it, it it's work you have to work at it because if you lose it it only takes one moment of losing balance losing tension you're off the beam you're, you're off the side of the cliff however you want to look at it and i think that's the thing that people don't understand is like man when you start getting into when it's go time there, there's no simulation there's no dry runs you know you know what i'm saying and it's like people have to be really really careful about what where their intention lies where their focus lies because um you know what i was saying earlier god he's like hey you're free you're free and and that freedom it can it's a terrible thing it's it's the real freedom that Christ gives, not the false freedom that you think you have because, you know, <laughs> you have like an AR-15 or something, you know, like that. But the, the freedom is in surrender, right, Father? Like, or, or, or the, I think the difficulty for people is that once you are free, you can, and we've talked about this before, right? But it bears repeating that it's like, and it's the, and it's Dismas on, on the cross that it's like, there's no, there's nothing like what's going to happen to you is what's going to happen to you here. Like you're not coming down off this cross, you know, like that's, that's, this is, this is what it is. Like, this is where it's at. You're on the cross. You're not coming down. That's, that's it. So it's like what you do now with whatever agency you have is yours. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it only changes the, it only changes the outcome for your soul. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change the outcome for anything else. Right. And the freedom, the freedom to surrender, I think, is the scariest part because spirit, just as a spiritual principle, because I can't tell you how many times I've encountered people who are like, ah, I know this is right. I know that I know that what I'm seeing is right. I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but I just can't. I can't give up. I've had a dream to do X, Y, Z forever. And it's like, and I kind of know that that dream is wrong now, but I still, mm -hmm. I just got to do, I got to do it. I just got to do it. I can't give it up. Yep. You know what that is? That's the mm. rich young ruler. It is. It is the rich young ruler. And that's exactly what it is. It's the rich young ruler. And give away everything and follow me. And he's like, can't. I can't do it. Can't do it. I can't do it, you know? And again, it's sad because people think, this is people don't know what their life is that that's it goes both ways people don't they think there's the sum total of their life are these things that they want to do and you know it's like you come to a point which is why riches are so scary which is why and i mean like actual riches like i don't mean in a high, you know, i don't mean in like an in a allegorical sense i mean actual having a lot of money right because it can give someone a false sense of of what they think their life is. But I'm gonna tell you something, you live long enough, like, you know, I'm coming up on 50, right? Uh, and I I mean, it's like, it's me and my sister, you know? Like I've seen all my family die. I'm just, that's not morose, that's just truth. That's just the truth, you know what I mean? And I think that's the thing of like, you know, the world is busy chasing all chasing their tail in regards of like the false fountain of youth through whatever it is. You know what I mean? But for us, you know, my big thing is, uh, well, one of my big things is, you know, we're the people of God, right? Our, our job is to manifest, our, our, our job is to be the body of Christ in the world, right? Yes. And we're to preach that. And, I, and sometimes using words, right? Sometimes, right? But really we should be, it should be their actions. And we don't live lives that cause the rest of the world to go like, man, they're really like, they, the way that they're living, the way that that person lives, I, I don't know, it's otherworldly. Like, you know what I mean? There's something going on there. And not in a cuckoo way, not like a, like, ew, that's, that's a turnoff, but like you have, and I know people are going to just gag, but it's just the truth. We don't live in such a way that our coworkers, our neighbors go like, man, I want to like, I, I want what you have, you know, 
I want I want what you have. Like you you have whatever it is, a joy, a sense of purpose, a wisdom, a gravitas, like whatever it is, because it isn't just one thing, right? It isn't about like being Flanders, right? Because sometimes you can just like. Well, nobody wants to be Flanders. Nobody wants to be Flanders. No. That's, no. that's not what I'm saying. But like, we don't live that way, right? And I'm so, this this something to think about. If you don't live that way, for your own sake, let alone like being a witness, mm. you should really start thinking about something. You know what I mean? Mm. You should really start reevaluating some things. Like we all have our hard times for sure. You know what I mean? Mm. But like, if you fundamentally hate your life as a Christian, it, quote unquote, you may not be a Christian actually. I, I know that's tough for people to hear, but um you know i mean I, i've known enough people who have suffered i've known enough people intimately intimately mm -hmm. who had terminal illnesses handicaps you know of, of both a physical and mental stripe who you know had that abundant life that christ says that he came to give us right so i don't really want to hear it you know like i i'm telling you like um even if you're struggling like you can find fulfillment in your struggle like bearing your cross but that's mm. the thing like if 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 you fundamentally just hate your life right like the world does if you're busy trying to drown out your life something's wrong We're well this is forgive me father but this I, what you're saying here is like hitting so deep for me because you know, we have this influencer culture, you know, like influencer culture is the big thing. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that always stands out for me for influencers, when I like see, see them and the things I see them talking and all of that, none of them seem happy. They all seem miserable, mm -hmm. right? There, there's this, there's this like core, this deep seated anger to where it's like the only thing that that you would want, and this goes, I, now we're going back to the question is, people are like, well, I would want that much attention from people. I would want to be that famous. But would you really want their life? You know yeah. what I mean? Because their life is miserable. Right. And by the way, I was just reading in this, I think it was St. Gregory and Nisa's thing. Misery is the opposite of blessedness. And, you know, real talk, it's one of the, one of the reasons why I was like, okay, let's do the Beatitudes next. Because the Beatitudes sum up this paradox of being happy and mis and being being truly happy, right? Um, having joy, whatever, but at the same time, by by all worldly standards, being the least of these. How does that work? And it's the core doctrine of 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 our of the Christ. It's the core doctrine of our Master who we're supposed to emulate, right? And it's and it's it's my big like um, kryptonite aha moment for people who are stuck in moralism, right? Because I like that's the big thing too. Is like, man, um, if if you aren't pursuing the be like if you aren't pursuing the beatitudes actively in your life, you 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 are missing it, right? And that's why you know th there's these people. Um, you know, who tend to be very liberal in the Orthodox Church. Um, and when I mean liberal, I mean like left, like left leaning on things, you know? Um, and, and I understand it, I, I get it. And, it. and it gets all, it gets, you know, their motivation is they understand the, they have really grasped onto the victimhood of Christ, right? And that's, that's, that, that's their orientation, you know, spiritually, theologically, morally, ethically, I, I get it, you know what I mean? problem is is like it's it's a it's an, an, an unbalanced emphasis so that that imbalance leads them too much to the left if you're following me right but um the thing i want to get at is you know what they miss they they can get behind the poor in spirit the persecuted blah 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 you know what i mean but they miss the blessed part right and they they operate out of a spirit of complaint and a spirit of envy and a spirit of disdain. And the Beatitudes don't 
don't hold that. You, you understand what I'm saying? They don't. They don't hold that. The tension. You you, you see? Ah, uh, yes. Because, well, why would it be a pro if this person is being uh, persecuted for righteousness' sake? You know what I mean? Or they're having evil said against them in in mm -hmm. Christ's name? Like, what's the problem? They're blessed. That's right. Right? Like, that's right. Well, why are you complaining then? Right. What's the problem? What's the problem? That's good. They're blessed. The that's Lord right. says they're blessed. So, that's right. it's, so what's the problem? Really, so if they a if they a number one really understood it, mm -hmm. and then and then number two, if they really believed it, it's mm -hmm. it would be a different game, right? But mm -hmm. it's it's the moralism on the one end, right? Um, so the other end of that too is is the the kind of Typically, the right side of it falls into the trap of um, a kind of hyper spiritualizing of it. And I know that sounds weird, but what I mean mm -hmm. by that is they say that, like, it's they want to completely remove that from the everyday existence of people. And they want to make it into something that is, you know, another type of kind of like moralism right it's, is that gnosticism father would that be a gnostic approach to it well i would say that like yes is it, there's a very much a gnostic approach to it because they're never able to actually enter into it because they're too attached to their material position mm -hmm. whether that's power it's often very much power or wealth or whatever it is and so they're never they, they're never able to like enter into that place where where the beatitudes are incarnate yes right exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know okay I mean? yes um and so both of these are both of these are a real error you know and again this gets us back to that perfection right this this accuracy it's almost like we should have now in our vocabulary in our in our vernacular like when we say perfection what we really mean is accuracy accuracy yeah like we're precision, not precision something precision, like that. you know what i yeah. mean precision because it's achievable. And, I, and that's something else like, you know, if, if I had that, if I had the ladder full circle, if I had the ladder of, of the platform, this is my, this is one of the things I would preach too: wisdom, right? Seek wisdom, find Christ and perfection is possible. Mm -hmm. Right. And understanding what we mean by perfection, right? Because if, if, if you put in the work of a marksman, of a carpenter, then you, you can produce good things, accuracy. You know what I mean? It's possible. Right. That's one of the things about the beauty on a material level of an Orthodox church, because mm -hmm. the beauty that's executed through the skill and the gift of the iconographer and the wood, the wood, you know, the woodworker and the stonemason, the architect, that didn't come by happenstance. Mm -hmm. Right. But that mm -hmm. beauty that's that that is a, an accuracy of skill and, and, and a way of life and discipline it opens the door and it manifests transcendent beauty to us. So this, people have too much of a magical thinking when it comes to beauty. They think that, you know, a priest walks in there, sneezes real hard and all of a sudden, pow, out of his ears and his butt and his mouth, all the beauty comes out and it lands on the walls. Like, what, that's not, that's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not uh -huh. work. Uh -huh. right? Someone spent years sacrificing saturday nights and money and all that stuff right. to hone that craft yeah it does that make it less prayerful absolutely not it's actually what real prayer is right because real mm. prayer is work real prayer isn't you walking in there and like having a great time of feelings oh i felt so close to god man that's probably that's that's probably something else right it's the work it's the work that puts you close to god it's the surrender on the cross because who's closer to God, right? Yeah. Than Dis than Dismas at that well, moment. Well, what's liturgy mean? Work Liturgy's of the people, work right? Of the people. Yeah. You better get busy. Right. <laughs> on that note, since we're coming, <laughs> since we're coming up at, on on two hours, um, I had something that I wanted to to talk about as as maybe the last thing. Mm. Um, because I, I know that we had said that we were gonna bring up saints. 
Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I have uh, found recently that I've been going through as I read the lives of the saints every day, you know, I had been passing over for a while. I had passed over the, the stories of the commemorated icons on various days. Oh, I don't know why I had passed over them. But yeah, I've started, <laughs> I've started reading them and I'm just, I'm just blown away, you know, by so many of them. Um, but I, but there was one cause t today as we're recording this, it's, it's, so it's Thursday night for you. It's Friday here. Uh, so July 23rd by the old calendar. And it's this one I ran across and I was like, what a strange name. I, it's usually the, some of the names will really get me of these icons, but this was, um, icon of the most holy Theotokos the joy of all who sorrow and then in parentheses with petty change i was like yeah. what what is the yeah. with yeah. petty change yeah and it says uh i'll just i'll just read it uh, yeah, yeah, it says it. was was the icon of the mother of god joy of all sorrowing with petty change was glorified in the year 1888 in peterburg when during the time of a terrible thunderstorm lightning struck in a chapel but the icon of the queen of heaven situated in it remained unharmed to it, however, was melted small metal coins, half kopeck pieces that were laying before the icon. A church was built in 1898 on the spot of the chapel. And I saw I saw a picture of this thing and there's coins. There's little yeah. coins that, that were fused into the icon. Yep. And one of the things that was so interesting to me about this was. And, and another reason why I'm glad that I'm reading these is how like if you think about the total number of icons in existence and then you think about the total number of them that have some like like this is this really exists like there's really this icon where it's really these coins are fused and you're like yeah. how are these coins the, the myrrh streaming icons like these are real yeah. and like thousands upon thousands of people have witnessed them and it's just like where are these things in other, like, if you're looking for the truth, and I guess this is just something that I wanted, because you're an iconographer, right? Like, mm -hmm. this idea of, it, it seems crazy that there would be something like iconoclasm, except that it would be demonic, because these seem to be just over and over, like, if you're presented with these things, they're so hard to deny, that it's like, well, this has to be, there's something happening here. Mm -hmm. There's something happening in this church, because, I mean, there's not that many icons, like probabilistically, right. that there would be this many miraculous things that would happen with one of these icons. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing to me because iconoclasm is definitely of the devil. But on top of all that, when I was, I, the uh, gentleman I was speaking of today, um, earlier in regards of like you know just knowing his heart and just seeing you know um his desire for truth it's like i was telling him today i was kind of getting to the point of like you know you're you're approaching the church now you gotta understand like this isn't like a theory this isn't speculative like this is fact and don't take my word for it you can look at the you can look at the icons i mean my first time, gosh, I don't know, like 2004, I think. My first time, maybe 2005, my first time seeing, a, seeing like the miracle working icon of, uh, of um, Ibron, uh, uh, Hawaii. It's like. Oh, yes. That's like, mm -hmm. I'm not a Christian. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even like. I realized everything up until then, I like, I didn't even believe it's like, I was so like, what is happening? You know what I mean? And then subsequently, fast forward all these years later, you know, I had the honor of being able to hold her um, as, she, as we traveled from uh, St. Penasqueve Monastery to um, a parish um, who, who, uh, who has her, who she's the, the patron of that parish. Like, being able to hold her and like I'm gonna it was wild like like we're in this car it was like four of us four priests whatever we're in this car and you know I'm, I'm holding her and, and taking turns you know me and another priest are taking turns whatever and I'm holding her and then all of a sudden 
it's like, whoa, like she's in this like protective box and I'm holding her, right? I'm in the backseat of this truck. And then all of a sudden it's like the cab starts filling with the, the scent. Take in mind, we've been driving for, you know, 45 minutes, whatever. All of a sudden, just boom, it's just like so strong. And then um, Father Atanasi, who's, you know, one the, who's the guardian, he's like, oh, how far are we from the parish? And then Father Joe, he's like, oh, we're about, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah, she, she'll, always, she'll, she'll always do this when you get close to the church, whatever. It's just like... <laughs> It's, just, it's incredible. It's incredible. There's no little, there's no little gnomes in there. Right. Like father doesn't have like a, like a remote control. He's hiding under his cassock and like pushing a button to release odor. Like there's no tricks. It's, and then when you see her and it's just like, there's times where she, she's just flowing with myrrh. Yeah. Just wet. So that icon for people, I looked it up because it's rather rather close to here, actually, and uh, you know because it's in the Pacific. But it's like they, they'll set it on a pillow, and the pillow will, and then they drain oh. after the service. They'll drain oh, the pillow I mean, into like a gallon bucket. It's insane. It's insane. It's like <laughs> my my. I I wonder, Father. Like it's so interesting that you had that experience. Uh, you know. The the priest who's her guardian, Ath- Ath- Father Athanasius, is that is that yeah that there's there's technically the, like her technical guardian is is Deacon Nectari, but like Father Athanasius, he's the priest. Though he was the one who had her at that time, but he was the guardian, you know. But so what? So what was his like? Was he just very matter matter of fact? Like ah, well, this is like this is how it is. So matter of fact about it. <laughs> Imagine. So, so matter of fact about it. Imagine being in the presence of the miraculous so often that you could be matter of fact about it. And then I, I just wonder how that, how your lens on the world is just altered by that. Like, so how she has, how she's able to transform you just by her very existence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I haven't been, I haven't been yet. I don't know if I'll ever go. Probably won't. But from what I hear, because uh, I have your spiritual children who spent time there, like it's like beyond Athos. Because mm. for so many people, it's like the like oh yeah, of course it's like of course you know the miraculous are the, her presence and the miraculous it's just it's common you know. But I mean, listen, I'm a, like I'm a scumbag. I'm a loser. Like who am I? You know, and even in my just broken part of the world i I see the miraculous all the time Mm -hmm. all the time it's not to that level but i'm constantly seeing god doing things and take it for what it's worth i mean i used to complain about it but now i just i embrace it i just thank god right because it's what god has for me i you know what i see all the time is the Mm. (laughs) the devil's working so like right right. (laughs) you know what i mean so I'm constantly seeing the temptations of the evil ones, like mm. on the daily, on the hourly, and it, and so, you know, for me, I, I I used to be like, oh, why can't I ever get like good stuff? And it's like, you know what? I'm not worthy of good stuff. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I that you know, you count me worthy to be afflicted by by these devils, whatever. But it's just like, I'm desensitized to that now. You know, someone's mm. like, yeah, you know. Uh, I got my wallet stolen and then like the battery died and then like I mm-hmm. fell off the roof mm-hmm. and I'm like, mm-hmm. like, oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh, did you have a good time in prayer? Yeah, I did. Like, of course. You know what I mean? There it is. If you had a good time in prayer, well, the devil's coming for you. You know, like, mm-hmm. no problem. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been good. Two hours. We, we, we did. I, I think that I think this was pretty good. I, I maybe Andrew doesn't have to come back. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I can't wait to have him back. It'll be wonderful. And then we're gonna do attitudes, right? Yeah. So so I guess people were asking about what we would do. Next. Um, I think beatitudes is great. Uh oh, did I lose you?
Did I lose you? No? You're there. there. Okay, good. Um, you lost the you store. Bit, no. People check out the store. Can you hear me? Oh, no. You're, you're frozen, but yeah. There you you go. can hear me, though. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it'll hopefully it'll be good. Uh, good on the recording in the cloud. We've got the store, a uh, Royal Path dot Royal Path dot store. Uh, check out the Spotify playlist. We'll be back very soon. I'm not going to do his catchphrase because it's him, but I will tell everybody. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Andrew will be back. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I see you.